Okay, I want to talk about custom sorts of arrays in JavaScript. So there is with arrays a built-in sort method that we can use to sort anything based on its alphabetical order. Now this is based on the uh, UTF order, the character codes that you've got for every one. There's a number that represents every letter and so based on that, that is the order that things get sorted. So that works well if you've got strings like movies. So I have an unsorted list here of uh, movie names and an unsorted list of numbers. If I run this and I display the sort, works great for these strings, but the numbers, they don't look right. So 142 is coming before 16. Um, 40 is coming after 345. The reason that this happens is if you look at the values, it's looking at this as a string. So it's looking at the number one and what is its order. And then it says, okay, everything with number one is going to come first. Then everything with number two is going to come next. Then everything with threes, then everything with fours, then five, then six, then seven, and so on. So this messes up the numerical order. We need to be able to sort numerical things as well as sorting objects arrays of objects. So I'm going to get into how to do both those things here. All right, we have our array called movies. We've got an array called numbers. Right now, all I'm doing is I'm calling sort. For the string, it works great. For the numbers, it doesn't work. So what we can do is we can actually use this built-in sort method. It accepts an optional parameter, which is a function to run. So I'm going to create a function inside of here. I'm going to use an arrow function. This function will be passed by the sort method two things. So it'll be called multiple times. Every time it's called, it's going to pass in two values from the array, and it will decide how it should best pass in the values. It wants to be able to compare all the values until everything gets sorted. So let's just put a console.log, or I've got my uh, shortcut up here, so I'm just going to do log of the value for A and for B. So we can see what's being passed in. All right, let's clear this out, run it again. And this is what's happening. So you can see it's comparing the first and the second, then the second and the third, the third and the fourth, and so on, all the way down. It only runs through this one time from the beginning to the end. And that's because of the values that can be passed back. We can return either one, negative one or zero from this function. What we're going to do is we're going to compare the a and the b values. So if a is greater than b, so it's comparing the first two, it's going to look at this and this and it's going to say, okay, if a is greater than b, then I want to return one. If b is greater than a, I'm going to return negative one. Otherwise, I'm going to return zero. And this is all we need to do. Because the value is being passed in here, they're not going to be converted to strings. It's going to take the actual value. So this 40 is being passed in here. And the 40 is going to be a number. So it's going to do a numerical comparison between them. It's not going to convert it to a string. These were treated as strings. The default method takes all the values passed in, converts them to strings, and looks at the character value. This is just going to take the values and do comparisons. So now what happens is, well, I'll leave this comment on here as well. What's going to happen now is this is going to return 1, negative 1, or 0. And it's going to run through the array more than just the one time for each of the values until it has sorted them, until it's figured out the order that should happen. So I'll try this once again. There we go. So we can see a whole bunch more times this is being done. So we've got 142, 16, 142 again, 142, 142, 142, 142. So you can see it's doing it multiple times until it has figured out what the value should be. So it uses all these return values from all of these different comparisons. And it takes care of, okay, should I be using a bubble sort or whatever kind of sort it thinks is best 
to optimize the data that you're passing in for based on the size of the array, based on the data you're passing in, it will determine its own algorithm. All we have to do is return one of three values. There we are. Now we have a properly numerically sorted array. 16, 22, 23, 40, 59, 63, and so on. Great. Now, what about objects? We have this array of objects here. People equals this array. Inside, I've got an ID and I've got a name. So, just for the sake of argument, let's sort this based on the name. This is the value I want to do. I could do, I could do the ID, I could do the email, I could do the name. It doesn't really matter as long as I know which one I'm picking. Same sort of thing. I've got a variable here, sorted people, and it's not going to be able to do a sort of this because it's all a bunch of objects, so they're going to be the same order. What I need to do is create my custom function. So there's my arrow function. There we are. And then inside of here, A and B. This is going to be A, and this is going to be B the first time through the array. So the objects are being passed in. We're going to do this same comparison that we did before. I'll copy and paste that in here. Same idea. But I can't compare two objects like this. The objects are going to have different values. What I need to do is I need to get to the property. So we get to a.name, b.name, and we compare those. Same thing here for the negative one. And then if it's not either of those others, you know, we could just make this a return statement. It's going to run the same way. And, oh yeah, we should log out the result of this. There we are. So here's our array at the end. And by the name, JF, Pris, Rick, Roy. So that did work. Want to sort it by the number? Let's just change these to the IDs. And I can do just dot ID. I don't have to do any parse int or anything because inside of my object, I have left these as numbers. There's no quotation marks around these values. So it will be a numerical comparison. All right, let's clear, run this again. And there we are, sorted by the IDs. Great, so that's it. That's all you need to know about creating your own custom sorts. You can sort numbers by doing a very simple AB comparison or you can sort objects by any property that's inside them just by appending the property onto the end. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this helped you out. Uh, if you found it useful, please share it with other people. And as always, thanks for watching.